What's going on, everybody? Look, um, I apologize for last night. I was going to go live, but I had, you know, like I said, I was coming back from Nashville and um, I was dog tired. I'm not even going to lie to you. I was dog tired and I didn't have enough time to throw everything together. I was going to try to do that, but, you know, I don't want to give y'all a half-assed show. I want to give y'all the real deal. You know, that's what you deserve, and that's what I, I want to give. So, you know, that's why I, you know, I had to, you know, go ahead and make it for today instead. And I just wanted to make sure. Uh, I hope you all accept my apology, but we're going to definitely get into this because there's a lot that I got to say. And I know quite a few people have already spoken their piece. And now it's time for me to speak mine. So we're going to definitely uh, talk about this game some. We're definitely going to talk about some other some comments that were made today. And I mean, uh, last night. And we're definitely going to get into it because right now this, <laughs> this time team is in some trouble. They are in some trouble. And that's just, and that's really putting it lightly. The Titans got work to do. And we're going to get into that uh, definitely in just a moment. So, again, make sure y'all share this show out, um, whether it be on Facebook, Instagram, or Twitter. And we're going to get ready to get started. And we're going to get started in less than 60 seconds. We're going to talk about this Jags game. We're going to talk about, you know, kind of the upcoming um, game against the Chargers a little bit, but we'll get more into that tomorrow. But let's talk because a conversation needs to be had. So let's get this thing started in 60 seconds. What's going on, everybody? Uh, welcome in to TNT Post Game. I am your host, Chris, aka Blue Enforcer, and we're gonna have a very good show uh, on this evening. And I mean, we're gonna have a good show, but it's not gonna be a fun one as the Tennessee Titans get utterly and viciously embarrassed by the Jacksonville Jaguars, 36-22. to 22. And uh, make sure y'all do share this show out, uh, whether it be on Facebook, on Instagram, on uh, Twitter. Make sure y'all share this show out to everybody uh, so that everybody can get in on it. Uh, I know I'm going a little late because uh, I should have did this yesterday, but again, I was coming back from Nashville and uh, definitely had um, some things going on. But again, y'all make sure y'all follow the channels. Uh, yeah, give me a second. Y'all can follow the channel, whether it be on Facebook, on Twitter, or Instagram. Make sure y'all follow those channels. Uh, for everything All Titans, I will definitely give y'all 
um, as much uh, insight as I possibly can. But let, let, let's not waste any time because y'all ain't here to hear me talk. Y'all ain't here to, uh, you know, hear me, you know, blather on and stuff. Let's just go ahead and get into this game and let's just continue to give some real to this. And it is simply this. The Tennessee Titans fall to the Jack. I mean, not just fall. They were humiliated at home by the Jacksonville Jaguars. Let that sink into your mind just a bit. They lost. Not only did they lose to the Jacksonville Jaguars, they were humiliated by the Jacksonville Jaguars. This was not just a bad loss. This was a horrific loss. And there's really no other way to cut it. I know there are some that will say, the well, the distraction of the John Robinson firing and all of this and that. And the Titans weren't able to focus or concentrate on that. I'm just going to put it to you like this. That's a bunch of bull. That is a bunch of bull. I don't care that, you know, I don't care that John Robinson got fired. I mean, I do care, but then I don't because. That shouldn't matter. Your job is to be prepared to play this football game and come out and beat this Jaguar team. A team that you have beaten until now nine straight years at home. That streak obviously was broken. And the Tennessee Titans, again, the 36-22 wasn't even really that close. This was an absolute beatdown by the Jacksonville Jaguars. They dominated this game from about the second quarter on. Now, the Titans started off fine in the first quarter. But after that, they did absolutely Nothing. They stunk. In all three phases, they stunk. In all three phases, they were bad. And I will venture to say this. This loss, and we've lost three in a row, this loss was not only as worse not only was worse than the loss last week to the Eagles, this loss was not only as bad as the loss to Buffalo. This loss was just, was probably on par, if not worse, than the 59 nothing drubbing that the Patriots gave us back, I believe, in 2006. It was even worse than that. This loss was an absolute disgrace. It was a disgrace because the Tennessee Titans, I mean, came out of that game with no energy. They felt like they didn't want to be there. They basically acted like, why are we even playing this game? I don't even care. And I'm going to tell you who deserves the blame for that. But this was a disgrace. I see Stephen Crosio up in here. Derek Roberts said, better not cancel. Hey, I'm, I'm here. I'm not going nowhere. Stephen Crosio says, the new Mike Malarkey, and we're going to talk about that because that is exactly what I'm thinking. Tremaine was agreeing with me earlier. Like, the Titans are in trouble? Yes, they are in deep, deep trouble. And, of course, our resident Titans hater is here. Not surprised. 
But the way things are going right now, in a way, he's right. Not all year, but right now, they are trash. Tyson said, how bad do you think we'll get blown out by the Chargers? It ain't going to look good. It ain't looking good. Now, no, Ian's trying to add some positivity, saying we're down, but we're not out. Right now, we're heading towards being out. I mean, a couple, a few weeks ago, maybe even last week or two weeks ago, we're basically talking as if the AFC South is all but wrapped up. It is all ours. After this loss, not anymore. It ain't a foregone conclusion. The AFC South, for the first time this year, Titans winning the AFC South is kind of in doubt. Well, no, I take that back. The AFC South is in doubt. Making the playoffs is kind of in doubt, too. Sherrod says, are we drafting the old wide receiver off the line? Need to be both. What's up, eyes watching me, Blue Fire? Dear Rob says, yep. They know he could beat us now. And so we're definitely getting some comments. I don't think Trevor Lawrence owns us yet. But like I said, I, I told some of y'all that the Jacksonville Jaguars in the last couple of years in the next couple of years, maybe the next year, is going to be a problem. So, yeah, I said that this was going to be a problem. And they are becoming a problem. They are definitely that. So, Let, let's just get into what we came to talk about, and that's the good, the bad, and the god-awful, because this is a disgrace. You heard some boos in the crowd, and it was warranted. It was very well warranted, and it was well-deserved, because this team played like absolute garbage. They did. They play like garbage. And I was sitting there like, this can't be happening, right? But it was. It was exactly what happened. It was exactly what happened. This was humiliating. It stunk. And I'm going to show y'all an image. That's going to tell the whole story. Well, one of the story, but this is a disgrace. It was a disgrace. It was, it was bad. It was really, really bad. And I, I had never been more humiliated, embarrassed, or just down as a Titans fan as I am right now. It is awful. Absolutely awful. I, I just, I don't know where this team goes from here. And I know I, I sound like a broken record. I sound horrible to say the least, but it, it, it's the honest truth. I don't know. I honestly don't know where we go from here. So the good, the bad, and the awful. Let's start with a little good. 
And I'm going to get to some of y'all comments in a minute. Chig and Hooper doing work. That is the good. Chig and Austin Hooper are doing some good work because Chig had four catch had six catches, 45 yards on a touchdown. Hooper had five catches for 68. Those two are not the problem. And they are looking good. And I think you can build on this. Chig is slowly starting to become a player. Is becoming a player. A serious player. And I think they're, you know, I think Hooper, you know, with a better offensive coordinator would be used a lot more. But that's all the good that I have was Chig and Hooper doing work. And Nick Westbrook and Keita caught a touchdown. That was cool. But now to the bad. What are the turnovers? Extremely uncharacteristic of the Tennessee Titans. The Tennessee Titans usually are very good at taking care of the football. And Sunday, they did not take care of the football well at all. Four turnovers, three of them in the first half. All of them led to 20 Jacksonville points. That's basically how they scored all their points. You had a strip sack, which we'll get to in a minute. Derrick Henry fumbles twice, which is extremely uncharacteristic uh, of him. There was no such thing as a pass rush, which we haven't said that. I mean, we've been saying that for the last couple of weeks, but we're used to a big-time pass rush, and right now it's not there. I did not know we were going to miss Danico Autry that much. But we do. I like that. Get chiggy with it. Yeah, I like that. But. The pass rush, non-existent. The fumbles, very uncharacteristic of Derrick Henry. And the turnovers, very uncharacteristic of the Tennessee Titans. Now, see, we got Titan Anderson in here. What's going on with you? I know Brandon's in here. You know, Chay caught the touchdown. Bad Henry fumbled twice. Like Ms. Jackie said, yep, we beat ourselves with turnovers. And, you know... Again, this was not really all about the Jacksonville Jaguar. This was more about us and how bad we were, which leads to the god-awful. And we start with the double Ds. Todd Downing and Dennis Daly, or Dennis the Dud Daly, and Todd Bud Light drowning. These two guys are killing this football team single-handedly. Todd Downing is horrible at his job. Let's just call it like it is. He's horrible at his job. Don't know why he is still the offensive coordinator today. He should be fired, but... I suggest you all buckle up and prepare to be disappointed. Dennis the Dud Daly. Nothing else needs to be said. Helped give up that strip sack that led to a score. Dennis Daly practically gift wrapped a touchdown for the Jacksonville Jaguars. And again, I said it before and I'll say it again. Dennis Daly is the worst offensive lineman in the NFL. He is the worst offensive lineman in the NFL. The worst. This guy has given up 11 sacks. 
Let that sink into your head. 11 sacks. 11. Tennessee Titans, I believe, have only given up right now the Tennessee Titans have given up let me see it says that the Titans have given up 35 sacks on the year 35 sacks Dennis Daly is responsible for 11 of them. Let that sink into your mind one more time. The Tennessee Titans, as a team, have given up close to 40 sacks. Dennis Daly has given up almost a third of those sacks. A third. 33% of the sacks that the Titans have given up have been given up by one guy alone. Dennis Daly sucks badly. But now Downing has been so bad, he rubbed off on the defense too. Because the defense has taken a major step back. I mean, I've never heard of a defense going from close to elite to stinking in the same season. And it seemed like ever since the Kansas City game, this Titan defense has never been the same. Ever since that game, the Titans defense has never been the same. And that's bad. So, I mean, this defense has no pass rush, can't cover anybody. And the defense is banged up. Some of the worst possibilities have happened. Christian Fulton, your number one corner. David Long, probably your best middle linebacker. Danico Autry, one of your pillars of your pass rush. And I would also say your best pass rusher, Harold Landry. But the Titans were doing fine without Landry in the beginning of the year. But, man, we should, play, we should have him now. But we don't. And that really sucks. But the worst thing is, it just seemed like the Titans as a team had no energy or want to win. They didn't have any desire to play this game. And Mr. Jones said, Autry, Autry being out has hurt our pass rush. And we never thought we would be like, we're missing Danico Autry that much. We are. We are missing Danico Autry badly. Weaver has been pretty non-existent recently. And the defense has gotten hurt by injuries in the worst possible times. And I'm going to get to some of y'all comments uh, in a minute. But I like this comment from William Young. Vrabel's pride, along with daily and downing, equals loss. And that is pretty true. That is pretty true. That week six by, it was a pretty, it came in a really bad time. Because you had no time, 
You have no time to heal. You have no time to rest. You got to keep playing. We had a very early bye week, and it did hurt. Steven Crosio, Vrabel refuses to do anything about the double Ds. And that's what we're going to get to next. And Dennis Daly, yeah, John Robinson had the nerve to go get him. Yep, that one. Now that one is definitely on John Robinson. No doubt about it. I will not disagree. King Braylon says the defense has been so fatigued and the offense is three and out with no breaks. Yep. Zach Cunningham has been hurt, and even when he's been in the game, hasn't been that good. Philip Maddox with a super chat, and I appreciate it. The awful is daily. He creates more open holes than prom Ron Jeremy did in the 80s. Oh, my God. <laughs> Yo, I mean, Dennis Daly is horrible. He is absolutely horrible. Derek said, with Belichickian goes wrong. What's up, AZ Mick? And Mr. Jones says, uh, the John Robinson firing was on the player's mind. It took away some of the focus. And see, I will say, I do put a little bit of blame on Amy Adams Strunk because she created that distraction. She created the distraction. She kind of lit the match, so to speak. But I will say, for yesterday's game, even though Amy Adams Strunk lit the match and started the fire, A.J. Brown kind of threw a little bit of gas on it. But this loss is all on one man, Mike Vrabel. You don't have John Robinson to blame anymore because he's gone. This was Mike Vrabel's fault. This was seriously Mike Vrabel's fault. I understand there were distractions. I get it. The firing of John Robinson hit everybody. But this is why this is Mike Vrabel's fault. Because this, Mike Vrabel's job is to prepare this team to play. Doesn't matter if any distractions are going on. You're supposed to be able to block that out and play football. And Mike Vrabel did not have this team ready to play football. And they came out with no energy, no focus. I mean, early on, they started off fine. Derrick Henry had 121 yards rushing in the game. Okay, sorry about that, everybody. Um, I don't know why my mic just went out just quickly, but Derrick Henry had 119 yards in the first half. 119. He had 96 yards in the first quarter, 23 in the second. He had just two yards in the second half. Two, two in the second half. That is coaching malpractice. This is all Mike Vrabel's fault. Now, again, the turnovers, yes, that's on the players. 
Dennis Daly messed up on that strip sack. Even when Chig chipped him a bit to give Daly time to get out there, Trevor All Walker just went, just waltzed right around him and got the sack. Derrick Henry's two fumbles. The Ryan Tannehill interception was bad. No doubt about it. No communication. But the fact that this team came out and gave that performance is clearly on Mike Vrabel. He did not have this team ready to play. He did not have them focused when they should be. And it seemed like he had no answer. Just seemed like, you know what? What what can I do? You could make some changes. But I'm about to play out a clip that's gonna really make y'all mad. And you know, Tights Out said, didn't Daly block two pass rushers on one play? I don't think so. On one sack, Chig chipped on Daly, and he still got sacked. Tannehill still got sacked. And I want to say the other one was just the other. And Derrick Roth says, this Teresa still thinks Dennis Daly isn't the worst offensive lineman. And again, I have tweeted with Miss Teresa about that. And I, you know, and I and y'all know I love Miss Teresa. I love Miss Teresa. But I couldn't disagree more. Obviously, it's this is an indictment on the Raven Clark and Dylan Raiders that you won't even make a change. And so, again, if y'all thought y'all were mad before, get ready to be even more upset at what Mike Vrabel had to say. Because, again, this was his fault. Not having this team ready, losing three in a row, this is on Mike Vrabel. And this is what he had to say on the Mike Vrabel show last night a question asked by a fan. Another Twitter question. You said in a recent press conference that you're open to the idea of things that need to be made in terms to improve the team. So where are you currently in the idea of organization changes, coaching changes? Uh, we're, we're not going to make any coaching changes uh, during the season. You know, that's those are things that I evaluate at the end of the season. Um, you know, I see... Well, what's being taught, you know, I, I have uh, the luxury of, of going into each and every room. I, I hear what's being coached. I hear the details. Um, I, I hear the, the design of each and every play. Um, so that's, you know, that's not something that, you know, I, I, I'm going to be doing um, right now. Uh, but again, we'll evaluate everything at the end of the season, um, you know, and go from there. You just heard it out of the horse's mouth. He's not going to make any changes, y'all. Todd Downing's here to stay. It seems like Todd Downing could do no wrong in Mike Vrabel's eyes. <laughs> Derek Roberts says, the kiss of death. And I think so. Alex says, I've been saying it for a long time, Vrabel's ego will cost us everything. And see, I said that too. Mike Vrabel is an egomaniac, and you can tell. This is, again, why this is Mike Vrabel's fault. Mike Vrabel is allowing all of this to happen. He is allowing Todd Drowning to continue to be the offensive coordinator when, and Lee said this on his podcast, Arthur Smith left this team as the number three offense in the league. We have since become the 29th ranked offense in the league. Damn near close to dead last in the league in less than two seasons. 
Todd Downing has completely destroyed the offense. And he has done it single-handedly. We're 29th offensively. When a couple of years ago, we were number three. And Mike Vrabel has allowed this to happen. Dennis Dudley still being the left tackle. Mike Vrabel is allowing this to happen. He is letting all of this happen. And the fact of the matter is this. I can honestly say as long as Mike Vrabel is the head coach of the Tennessee Titans, I am sad to say, I just don't think Todd Downing's going anywhere. And I hate saying that, and I feel I want to just slap myself for saying that, but it seems like it's the truth. As long as Mike Vrabel is the head coach of this team, Todd Downing isn't going anywhere because Mike Vrabel is stuck in his ways. He is stubborn, and he just won't let it go. Because, again, Because, again, as somebody said earlier, as somebody said earlier, Mike Vrabel has become the new Mike Malarkey. That is exactly what he's doing. We are losing a grip on the AFC South. This season is falling off the rails quickly. And Mike Vrabel is not doing a damn thing to stop it. This is where you look to your head coach to stop the bleeding. Right now, we are bleeding out. And Mike Vrabel is not trying to stop the bleeding. He is just letting it continue. He is letting it happen. You know, I, I thought of a joke with like what Chris Rock uh, would say with the firing of John Robinson. I ain't saying I would have done it. You know, he basically was referring like what he said about, uh, what Chris Rock said about OJ and that trial with um, with his girl, with his, well, wife, and then Goldman. He was like, Chris Rock said, I ain't saying I would have killed her, but I understand. That's how I felt with John Robinson. I ain't saying I would have fired him right then, but I understand. And I do understand. Not getting rid of Todd Downing, I don't understand. I don't. Mike Vrabel is basically becoming the new Mike Malarkey. Again, I want y'all to hear this one more time. Another Twitter question you said in a recent press conference that you're open to the idea of things that need to be made in terms to improve the team. So where are you currently in the idea of organization changes, coaching changes? Um, we're, we're not going to make any coaching changes. Uh, That's enough said right there. He is basically doing the exact same thing Mike Malarkey is doing. What have I been saying for the last month? Those who do not learn from history are doomed to repeat it. Mike Vrabel obviously isn't a fan of history because he hasn't thought about this. Be like, you know, and a lot of people say, well, you don't fire a coach that has had nothing but winning seasons. Mike Vrabel has won. Why would you fire him? Mike Malarkey took a team that was three and thirteen to nine and seven, got them to the playoffs, won a playoff game, and John Robinson still fired him for not getting rid of Terry Robinsky as offensive coordinator. 
Think about that. Mike Malarkey got the team to the playoffs. And because he would not fire his office of coordinator, he got fired. Seem familiar? Mike Vrabel is doing the exact same thing. The exact same thing. He is willing to die on a hill for Todd Drowning. For Todd Downing. He is willing to die on a hill. Tighten up low. What's up with you, my friend? He is willing to die on a hill for Todd Downing. And Steve Carter says the next GM is going to force Mike Vrabel to make a choice. And we already know his response. Mike Vrabel's going to say, I quit. And even though Ken Moore is not a fan of it, I think we should at least take a look at Tim Kelly these last four games, and let's see. Let's try and see if something different happens. But, again, He is the passing game coordinator, so he has a little something to do with the passing game. And the passing game hasn't been great. Hasn't been great. So, again, this is what I would do. He said he would evaluate in the offseason. Here's the thing, though. What happens if we don't make the playoffs? Because that could actually happen. Telio Kick says, I'm heading to L.A. Hope, pray the guys come out and play hard. I don't know. That might be a sad trip to L.A. That could be a sad trip to L.A. Because, yeah, Phil Maddie said last year, he said, Mike Raven may not be the guy he thinks he is. And again, There's been talk on radio shows saying, have we reached the ceiling with Mike Vrabel? Has Mike Vrabel taken us as far as he could take us? And I think the answer is yes. I think Mike Vrabel, this is as far as Mike Vrabel is going to take us. Because I think Mike Vrabel is so complacent, he's just happy with winning the division, and getting the home playoff game, and then being one and done. It seemed like he's fine with that. We as fans are not. (laughs) What have you done for me lately? That is what this league is about. And, again, others have said it, I have said it. If the GM is in-house, if it is Ryan Cowden or Monty Austin Ford is the GM, that's the only way Mike Vrabel stays. And that would be unfortunate because it would seem as if Mike Vrabel is technically running the team. Because those two guys are going to be yes-men to Mike Vrabel. We know Mike Vrabel's an egomaniac. Mike Vrabel is very arrogant. Mike Vrabel thinks he knows everything and everybody else knows nothing. That is Mike Vrabel. And make sure y'all hit that like button and make sure you hit the subscribe button as well. If you're in here, everybody in here, please hit that like button for me. But Mike Vrabel is an egomaniac. He thinks he all that. He thinks he knows everything. And Monty Austin Fort or Ryan Cowden, they will be yes men to Mike Vrabel. Mike Vrabel will ultimately be the de facto general manager. He's going to want things his way or the highway. Now, if Amy Adams Strunk goes outside and gets just a new GM, with no ties to the Titans, no ties to Mike Vrabel, then I could see a conversation going like this. The new general manager is going to come to Mike Vrabel and say, hey, Mike, 
You've been doing a great job here, getting this team to the playoffs, winning record ever since you've been here. But um, you need to fire your offensive coordinator. You probably need to also take a look at firing your offensive line coach and maybe your special teams coordinator. And you get one of two choices. Either fire those guys or you're gone. And if Mike Vrabel says anything other than yes, sir, he should be fired. Plain and simple. That's what I would do. I would sit with Mike Vrabel and say, Todd Downey needs to go. Keith Carter, Keith Carter, Craig Ackerman, you know, if he lets them go, fine. But mainly Todd Downey. If you don't fire Todd Downey, I'm firing you. Make the choice. Make it now. And if Vrabel says, I want to keep those guys, he says, no, sir, or I'm going to keep those guys. I'm go- I, if I go down, those guys, I will go down for those guys. I'm going to be like, you're fired. You can go clean out your office. Thank you for your service, but your your services are no longer required. I would fire Mike Vrabel right then and there. And, of course, some, like Burning Devil, would say, fire that damn G- new GM if he ever threatened Vrabel. Dude, are you messed up in the mind a little bit? Love you. I appreciate you. But I'm just saying, if Vrabel is not willing to fit, make a solution, then that means Vrabel is also part of the problem. If Vrabel doesn't see that Todd Downing is a problem, then Mike Vrabel is a problem. And again, I would do that. But unfortunately, Phil Maddox is right. Even if Vrabel does fire Downey, he's not going to really look outside. He's going to just um, do the okie doke and make Tim Kelly the offensive coordinator. Now, Kelly might do better. He probably won't. Because Mike Vrabel is so down for I only want guys I know and I trust. Yeah, he will not interview better candidates, and that is sad. Very sad. And I know Bernie Devil is trying to be positive and trying to stick with Vrabel, but Amy Adams Trump made it clear, just winning the division and just getting to the playoffs is not good enough. It's not good enough. She wants Super Bowls. She wants championships. And if Mike Vrabel isn't willing to take us to that next level, it's time to find somebody that will. Burning Devil, if we go far in the playoffs, then so be it. If we win a Super Bowl, then that might justify keeping Vrabel. But wouldn't it also not justify firing John Robinson? That would make firing John Robinson a mistake if they make it to the Super Bowl or win it. But this team is one and done. I don't see us going very far. So, it's time for Vrabel to face the music, let go of Downing, but obviously he won't. And until Vrabel gets rid of Downing, Vrabel is going to be the problem. It's either Downing goes or Vrabel goes. And I will be just fine if Vrabel is gone. Because then we could get an offensive-minded coach that can fix this offense. If Shane Bowen and Jim Schwartz stays as co-defensive coordinators, I am perfectly fine with that. So 
This is on Mike Vrabel. He is the head coach. It's all on him now. We're on the verge of three straight one and dones in the playoffs. Yes, we would have won three straight division titles, but right now that's not good enough. And I agree. Downing should be gone no matter what happens. And I agree. Like I said, like I said, the Chris Rock joke. I ain't saying I would have fired John Robinson at the time, but I understand. I understand the firing. And that's fine. But if the Tennessee tight but burning devil, let me ask you this. What happens if the season completely goes off the rails and Mike Vrabel doesn't make the playoffs? Are you going to ride his coattails then? So if we don't make the playoffs, Vrabel's got to go. And I will go get the assistant general manager in Kansas City and hire Eric B. Enemy. Turbo Durant, the Titans are collapsing. Yes. The season is slowly starting to fall off the tracks. We are starting to fall off the rails. And Mike Vrabel, it is, we're bleeding out. And Mike Vrabel is not doing a damn thing to stop the bleeding. And Josh Reyes says, why not do it now? Evaluate Todd Downing, I mean, uh, Tim Kelly these last few games. I agree. And now Bernie Devil is saying what others have said, blaming the injuries. Okay. I understand we're hurting with injuries. But was anybody saying anything about all the injuries last year when we used 91 players, but we still got the number one seed? Nobody was really tripping about the injuries then. Yes, we were mentioning it, man, you know, dad, they got a lot of injuries. You know, 91 players. But we still got the number one seed. Nobody used the injuries as an excuse. I've been hearing so much about injuries being an excuse more now than ever. And it's pretty freaking sad, if you ask me. We had AJ. John Robinson shouldn't have gotten rid of him. I agree. Airbnb should have a, um, a try. Burning Devil, I don't give a damn to try hard with the backups. Last year, we were trying hard with the backups. No different than last year, this year. We have used nearly 80 players this year. We used 91 last year, but we still got the number one seed. With pretty much the same roster. So I don't want to hear no excuses. But it is hurting our pass rush. I do agree. So I'm going to get ready to wrap things up and say this. We're going to talk about the Chargers game tomorrow. Get your nominees in for dunce of the day because there are plenty of nominees and star of the week, and there's only maybe one or two. We're going to talk about that. And, I mean, I forgot to mention this news, that the Titans cut Ola Adani and Joe Schober, which I kind of don't understand that. I mean, our defense is already reeling, and we need bodies, and you cut two guys on defense. I don't understand it. And Jeff Swain is still on the team. So right now, Amy Adelstruck again has said, right now we're not good enough. And right now I'm pointing back to Vrabel now. John Robinson was one blame. Amy Adelstruck lit the match with the distraction, lit the fire. A.J. Brown kind of pissed on it a little bit. But now Vrabel, not wanting to make changes, is turning it into an inferno. This is a dumpster fire. And it ain't getting no better. Turbo Duran, I appreciate the I appreciate that. I try my best to know everything I can. I'm not perfect by any means. 
But I try my best to know because I love this team and I love football. But the truth of the matter is this. If Vrabel isn't going to help with the solution, he is part of the problem. Those who do not learn from history are doomed to repeat it, and I'm going to keep repeating that because this is repeating history all over again. And the Titans better get it together before going out to L.A. Because if they go out to L.A. playing like they did against the Jaguars, the L.A. Chargers are going to embarrass them even worse. They are going to smack them around. And Justin Herbert is better than Trevor Lawrence and has better weapons. So we could be heading for four straight losses. And if this continues on, forget just the division. We might not make the playoffs. And this will be a cataclysmic collapse. And that would lead, I think if we don't make the playoffs, Vrabel has to be fired in my opinion. And JS75 is right. I forgot to mention the strength and conditioning coach. I think he needs to go too. Never heard about all these batches of injuries under Steve Watterson when he was the strength and conditioning coach. I never heard of an injury list being yay long, but it is. So, <laughs> My little brother comes in and says, you should be the coach. The Titans will be undefeated. I don't know if we'd be undefeated, but I think I could do a good job. Bernie Devil said, we won seven games straight. Actually, it was six. I want to say it was six in a row. But now we've lost four in a row. I understand your belief, but I don't have, I don't have a good feeling about this game. I have my doubts. I'm out on Vrabel. I will say it. I'm out on Mike Vrabel. That comment right there, I'm done with Mike Vrabel. I have stabbed him in the back. He ain't good enough. So everybody, I'm about to get out of here. Uh, I appreciate everybody tuning in. And tomorrow, again, we will talk more about this. We will go into the Chargers game and a little bit more. But again, everybody, thank y'all for tuning in to the show. Also, oh, I forgot. Rest in peace to Mississippi head coach Mike Leach. Um, I believe he passed away this morning after heart complications. Uh, I'll talk more about that tomorrow. But rest in peace to Mike Leach. Uh, but I thank everybody for tuning in. And I uh, hope everybody has a good rest of your Tuesday. And let's tighten up. Because that's all we know how to do. Good night, y'all.